as you can see it, on the top it's nailed to the house, in the bottom it's nailed to the sill blade that we anchor with anchor bolt. So now we have good masonry wall and we have a connection that grab the house and you tie it back to the sill blade. That sill blade also is tied to the uh, masonry uh, uh, stem wall by the anchor bolt. After we did that, to go back, I'm sorry, go push the, uh, up, up. By, sorry, uh, my mistake. Where are we? Up, the up arrow. One more. Yes. We are not going to leave the, uh, leave the OSCB exposed to the weather because it's going to be spoiled and become bad and rot. So what we had, we added on the top of that 5 8 thick OSCB. On the top of it, we have building paper, like we do usually in walls. And on the top of the building paper, we have that typical siding. So that um, a ba band that around the house consists of three layers. The OSB and the nailing, and then building, uh, building paper and uh, insulation, waterproofing, and then the typical siding. As a result, this band area will be slightly sticking out of the norm. So we add what we call flashing on the top so the water cannot penetrate uh, uh, in that bend area. And here's how it looked the house after we did reinforce it, the stem wall. We have the band, we have flashing, and this is zoom of the flash. Anybody have a question so far? Or it's easier, it's too easy, or you guys, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying uh, it correctly, or uh, my accent sometimes uh, <laughs> get people off. My students usually tell me in the classes that it really took us about a week until we understood what the heck I'm saying. So I hopefully it's not the case with you guys today. Let's go for the uh, uh, easy method. Here's another house, beautiful by the way, I was inside this house, the young lady inside made that house beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But uh, the house have a skirting, uh, vinyl skirting, and the very important thing I would like to, have to say is you, if you have a skirting, you still have to have the mystery stack at the mm -hmm. perimeter. I'm going to share it with you. But here's the, uh, uh, under the house, the, uh, the stack of concrete blocks. And uh, we found some ties, but not really the number required by the code. I'm going to share with you what's the number uh, by the code. The ties is called, that's tie down. The tie down is tied to the concrete by an anchor bolt. And in the top, it's wrapped around or bolted to the chassis beam. So you have to grab the house and tie it down to the foundation by this tie. And this is the zoom on the bottom. This is zoom on the top. Now, look carefully here, if you would, on your right side. Can you see the vinyl? Can you guys see the vinyl here? You see the vinyl? Just beside the vinyl, there is a stack of concrete blocks, usually a six foot in center. This is the stack at the very edge of the house, at the very perimeter, that support the exterior walls, that support the roof. See the roof coming on the exterior walls, and you need to have a stack not only under the chassis, as you can see it here, but also at six foot in center, we have a stack of concrete blocks at the very edge of the house to support the wall that support the roof. Just be careful now, it's not only at the chassis. I saw many houses that only have the support at the chassis, and that's not, but according to the manufacturer, neither is according to hot code. You have to have support at the very edge. Yes, sir. So when you do runners, instead of doing runners, could you just pour a whole concrete slab and be done with it? Yes, usually it is the best you have concrete runner. It's the best. You can also have blocks, but uh, this one is the, the, the continuous. Go ahead, please. Okay, if you look at, at the plan, this is the plan of the house. Can you see it's almost about 10 foot on center. You have a tie down, tie down, tie down, tie down, tie down in the short direction of the house. One on this side and one on this side. So this is what we call tie downs in the short direction at 10 foot on center on the two eaves of the house, each side. Go ahead. Here it is. See the tie down coming from the chassis, perpendicular to the chassis beam, down to the concrete. Go ahead, please. In the long direction also, you have to have each chassis beam should have one parallel to the chassis beam at the two in the gable. One in the top, very beginning of the house, and one at the end of the house. One and one. So we have four, in this photo we have double wide with four chassis beams. So we have four parallel to the chassis beam at one end the gable, and another four at the other side of the end the gable. Uh, if you look carefully at these guys, 
Here's the, the, the tie down that's parallel to the chassis beam. It's usually bolted, not surrounding it. So bolted, going down parallel to the chassis beam, down to the concrete. You can see the one that's going in the shorter direction, that's wrapped around the chassis beam and going down perpendicular to the chassis beam, down to the concrete. Here is another view, the one in the long direction, which is bolted, and the one in the short direction that's uh, around the house. Um, I see the next presenter. How many minutes do I have, sir? Five minutes? Okay, I'm not in trouble yet. Uh, in addition to the tie-down guys, there is manufacturer that produce some special uh, kind of uh, uh, seats that uh, resist uh, uh, lateral loads. You can see one of them here in this photo. There is another one here in this photo. There are several uh, special companies that produce this uh, product. You got to make sure that what they claim is correct by having a third party review. Uh, be careful now at the, uh, uh, at the uh, marriage line. You can see that this is the cantilever from the one side, one unit, the other one unit, and this is the, uh, the uh, marriage line. When you have a big opening at the marriage line, you have to have double or triple stacks each, each end of the opening. So if you have an opening in the marriage line, you go down under your house and you make sure you have double or triple stack each side of the opening because that's usually have a bigger load and it's not at six foot in center like we saw. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition to this dry stack of masonry, there is also some what we call chairs or seats that you can buy that will do exactly the same thing. Remember here there are two and two on this side, that's mean above there is a big opening and that's why we have two seats or two chairs and two chairs. So always you have one of these chairs at six foot in center, except at the marriage line when you have a big opening, then you have two of them each side of big opening. Uh, if you don't uh, uh, comply with the frost depth, then you have to uh, 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 provide some kind of ins horizontal insulation. So if you, you are not out of luck, if you don't, if your bottom of your foundation does not reach the uh, frost depth. Uh, definitely for your safety, I would like to check with me or any other licensed engineer before you use the seminar, the, the, the information in this seminar, because your safety is important. So please consult with your building official, myself, any other licensed engineer. And uh, that will reach us to the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead, please. Yeah, go all the way until you see the website down there. Yes, 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 yes. <coughs> That's it. So if you have a question, please go and ask. If not, you know, go back up if you would. <laughs> One more. If you, in the future, you have a question, we provide free initial consultation. Kindly visit our website and drop me an email. I will uh, promise to provide answer for your easy questions free of charge. And uh, if you guys have a question, go ahead. Anybody have a question, guys? Or was it too easy? Was it too easy, sir? Sure. Yeah, all right, boy. <laughs> so for I, the perimeter foundation, you're going to have to build it like a regular foundation with a, a footing, a 12 or 24 inch footing? I would say usually the parameter and the first chassis together, this is the width that you, you would like to comply with. So don't, bo I, I never saw it with um, uh, like a, a runner slab under the edge and then the first chassis usually combine the two. So you make a slab that's usually will provide to support the edge and the first chest. Mm -hmm. Any guys other questions? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So the permanent foundation status that is given to it, yes. even though it is still considered a mobile home or manufactured home, yes. that makes it easier to get uh, mortgages and... Oh, hey, yes. We, if you, if you, uh, we usually send you a sketch and the report. If you follow it, and you do it, and we come and we inspect it, we give you the issue, we stamp it that you comply with hot foundation. The answer is yes. Thank you guys very much. This gentleman I see um, uh, have a uh, uh, boxing